All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Scoops. Uh, we actually have quite a lot of news in the fighting game community as of late, and so we're going to try to cover them uh, and not take too long on each one. I'm going to be really, really trying to <laughs> keep, it, keep it short on as many topics as possible. So let's just jump in. First of all, we got some Dragon Ball fighters to roast. <clears throat> so Bandai puts out this tweet uh, that is talking about the end of the season is approaching already. From LCQ entries to ranking settlement, there's plenty of dates to look forward to over the coming weeks. To make it easier for you to visualize them, we've compiled everything in this post. Now, interesting, right? Interesting thing about this is that I feel like an overwhelming majority of people that even were participating in the tour uh, haven't really like had all the information, uh, as in like they haven't cared enough to like seek the information. <clears throat> I did do a video on the world tour back whenever it was first announced. Um, but throughout the the entire like you know world tour season i've seen a lot of people surprised about certain things being the way they are like there being no onlines this and that right um and so like them actually like being transparent with dates this is this is like this is a good thing right this is, this is a good thing that they at least took five minutes to put together times and dates to like actually show people so that it's clear so i'm not going to be mad at them about that we're going to be mad about them for everything else. Because once again, I will harp on this. This is the shortest world tour I've ever seen for any event, right? For, for, for any game. It started at EVO. It ends in November, right? <laughs> End of Tenkaichi's November. There, there's, uh, there is an offline in, uh, there's an offline in December. I believe UFA is in December. So that's why ranking settlements are not until December 6th, but... Uh, the end of like people being able to opt in and actually like gain points uh, without traveling to France uh, is November 26th, which is like you know August, August to December, or August to November is like, super super short. It's like really really short tour, right? Um, and so like yeah, it seems like they're kind of rushing through things. Uh, in my opinion, like they like have either you know they have deliverables to to meet or whatever they just want to get it over with because the world the world tour finals is early as well right uh it's in january uh the same weekend as frosty fostings which is another big mistake uh that i can't help but roast them about i don't know what the fuck they're thinking uh but it's just not it's not not good right like they're just more bad things on top of bad things uh to a community that already feels pretty scorned so if you go to this post and you scroll down You'll see it's nothing but people, you guessed it, asking about rollback. Where is rollback? No rollback, no fun. No rollback, nobody cares, right? That's all people care about. That's all people care about, and rightfully so, because you announced this last Evo, and you have not delivered upon what you said you were going to bring to the community. And the reason is, is because they didn't start working on it until very, very late. <laughs> they didn't, they might not have even still worked. I, I have no idea. I, I don't know if they've started at this point or not, but I think it's abundantly clear that they didn't start working on this at EVO or before EVO or even a month after EVO. I think it, it's that, that much is very, very, very clear. Uh, and so it's a lot of just empty promises. Uh, people are really sick of it. Uh, and I just, I don't know. Someone over there at Bandai has to get their shit together because it's just getting ridiculous at this point. Like, this is a joke. This is a joke. Um, none of you out there that love this game or they like this game, whether you watch it, you play it, whatever, do not give them any leeway when it comes to this shit. You keep pressuring them and you keep making them, making it known that you will not stand for this. That's the only way things will change. Otherwise, they're just going to keep getting away with bullshit over and over and over again. And they, you know, more is, it's, it's super, super clear that they've already gotten away with way too much as it is. So don't let them slide. Okay, okay, great. Next topic. Um, Microsoft uh, kind of updating some of their policy on on third party accessories. Uh, and so like at surface level, this seems like it's not really fighting game news, but it actually is uh, because if you uh, if you've been in the community for any amount of time, you realize that uh, a lot of fighting game controllers actually need converters to work on certain consoles because sometimes you buy uh, you buy a peripheral that is for Xbox and you need it to work on PlayStations or you buy it on PlayStation You need to work on Xbox, whatever, right? You need you need your controller to work on You know a console that it isn't originally intended for and so a lot of people use converters to accomplish that um, One of the most important 
converters in the scene right now is the, the Brooks Wingman, right? You see a ton of these at tournaments. They sell out all the time. They sell out all the time because, you know, tournaments are starting to be more and more on PS5. And <clears throat> PS4 sticks don't work on PS5. And so you need a converter in order to make it work. And so, like, these things are have been, like, consistently sold out <laughs> over and over and over again. I don't even think this is the right model, um, but I was just kind of trying to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And so, uh, with Microsoft's policy change, this really hurts fighting game tournaments um, because, you know, obviously a lot of people are not going to be able to participate in these events if their converters don't work. Um, and so, I think the reason that, that Microsoft enacted this policy was to, it's really just money shit. Like, they want to be in, completely in control of the accessory game. They want to, you know, they want to sell you a $60 controller. They want to sell you this and that. They want you to have to buy new stuff every every time you, you know, are inconvenienced. Uh, and unfortunately, this has a, a much bigger impact on the fighting game community uh, than pretty much anyone else. Like, other communities are affected, but fighting games suffer a lot from third-party converters not being supported. So um, all we can really do is like, once again, we just have to make them known that this is, we have to make it known that this is like not acceptable. Uh, and we have to just push for change. Cause like, if things go through the way they are, like we're kind of fucked. <laughs> we're, kind of, we're kind of fucked in that regard. Like it, this is really fucked up. Uh, and I really, I really not a fan. Um, especially, you know, it, it's, it's really, really awkward timing for this as well because, <clears throat> This was, this was really awkward timing as well because there's actually been discourse in the fighting game community about is running tournaments on PS5 sustainable? Is this something that we that we actually want to do? Because they're expensive, right? It, PS5s are expensive. Uh, everything involved, like, if you want to run Street Fighter 5, or if you want to run Street Fighter 6, rather, at a tournament, you don't only need a PS5, right? But you need uh, a 144 hertz monitor, right? Those are expensive. The Sony end zones that are used at tournaments, those are, at, like, a fair amount of money. Uh, I, I don't want to expose anyone's numbers or anything, but like the monitors we use at like Evo and CEO and like the big events, like they're expensive. They're not cheap at all. Uh, you can look up how much Sony end zone high end monitors are. Like you need a VRR you, that has to be 144 hertz. It has to support VRR, right? Like it's just a, a very high maintenance game. Um, whereas you don't need all of that on Xbox. So some TOs are talking about what if we run it on Xbox instead? Um, now that's going to bring in some awkward things because obviously the largest event in the fighting game community is a Sony owned event. And so people of course are incentivized to fall in line with what Evo does. Um, and so that is obviously going to be a point of, you know, contention, but yeah, this, this kind of puts the plans for even testing Xbox at tournaments kind of in the dirt, um, because this is obviously a big issue. So yeah, unfortunate. Uh, hopefully things change in the future, but don't know how likely that is at this point. What can you say? Okay, next topic. Granblue. Granblue Rising uh, was supposed to come out at the end of November, I believe. It's the end of, um, like, the like the very end of November. Uh, now pushed, yeah, previous release date, November 30th. It has now been delayed. It's been pushed two weeks to December 14th, uh, with early access starting on December 11th. Um honestly like people are people are being like doomer and whatnot i don't think this is a bad thing uh if you go and you look at how the grand blue team has been addressing you know feedback because when they initially dropped footage of the game there was a lot of backlash right they people didn't like the way they changed throws the way they changed like the mechanics behind doing uh true motion inputs versus you know the simple inputs these were like all things that people were up in arms about uh, and it seems like Grand Blue is a really, really good example of them actually taking uh, people's feedback and making changes before the game releases instead of just sending it and saying, oh, we'll fix it later. Uh, and so uh, I don't mind them delaying the game if they need the time to, you know, enact the changes that they need to enact. I think the game is shaping up to look really, really good. I don't have any issues with the way that they're doing things. The only thing that this does is uh, make a really, really awkward situation for DreamHack Atlanta. Uh, it's, which is a Bailey run event uh, because they're running Grand Blue at that event. And so th it's going to come out a day before the tournament. So they're going to have to download the game on all the on all the consoles and then make sure that all the settings are correct and all that and tournament ready. So it's awkward for him. 
but uh, for most people, I don't think this is going to be too big of an issue. A uh, two uh, two week longer wait is like not that much in the big in the grand scheme of things. So uh, that's all fine and dandy, um, and I look forward to you know trying out the game whenever it does come out. Okay, next, Street Fighter. So <laughs> this is really funny. So they they've been putting out uh, footage about uh, more avatar skins uh, in, in Street Fighter Six. And so before before we start on this, let's let's just go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the trailer. I might have to blur this on the final video for what it's worth, because uh, I don't know if they'll I, I don't know if they'll try to like DMCA or whatever. But. Okay, so um, they're putting in, you know, avatar skins for the Final Fight games, and this has stirred some discourse, right? This has stirred some discourse in the Street Fighter community uh, because I think we're actually starting to see like a a very clear uh, a very clear divide between the competitive community and the casual community here because uh, Capcom has been putting out avatar related stuff like they've been churning it out like they're doing the final fight thing they just put out a samurai skin like they've been they, you know the ninja turtles thing they've been doing a lot for avatars and it turns out if you go into street fighter and you go to the avatar battle hubs like there's a lot of people playing there's a lot of people that play avatar battles the casuals really really love it it's a really big deal and and so capcom is dialing in on that and you know putting out more and more and more stuff for avatars because that's where the money's at right there will always be way more casuals than than like hard competitors uh and so they're you know all inning on it <clears throat> that being said you know i don't blame competitors for feeling uh a little slighted right because you know, if you're someone that never plays Avatar Battles and you only play like the core Street Fighter game with the characters, uh, then, you know, you feel like you haven't really gotten much. You know, you still the color policy is still kind of whack uh, the way that like a lot of people still don't have colors because they're difficult to unlock. <clears throat> uh, and, you know, they tease costume three. Right. We we know about costume three, like the pajama jury um, and stuff like that. Right. There's there are costume threes for characters but there's been no updates on that. We don't know when that's gonna be, uh, and people are kind of left in the dark on that. Meanwhile, you know, the casuals are eaten. They get <laughs> they get all the avatar skins of the world. The, the best thing I can say here is that, you know, um, this, is a, this is a good thing uh, for the scene overall, right? Capcom actually being able to make money and monetizing in this way uh, only puts more money in their pockets which gives them more money to potentially do cool things i'm not saying that they're automatically going to but there's potential there right <clears throat> and also it gives me hope that maybe they take the uh capcom pro tour in a route where they monetize skins and they reroute some of those funds into you know the esports prize pools that would be a really really big deal um revenue share in that way is like huge absolutely huge way uh, to do, you know, big tours, big prize pools. So hopefully that's the way that they go. I'm not exactly sure if that's the way that they'll go, but all we can do is cross our fingers and hope. Uh, another short thing on Street Fighter. I don't have a I don't have a page for this because it's not that important. But the ranks uh, ranks did reset uh, the master rank, um, and so uh, they introduced legend rank, which is the top 500 people in terms of uh, in terms of MR. Uh, and so like this is really good right and so it's kind of like uh it's kind of like league uh if you've ever played league of legends you know there's ma there's masters and then there's challenger right challengers like the top i don't know what the number is for league but top whatever amount of people are challenger they're kind of doing that in street fighter the top whatever masters are going to be legend rank uh, and so that gives you know people the drive to actually still grind out ranked because to be honest the rank system is not the greatest in the world in a lot of people's eyes and so a lot of people just like kind of lose motivation to like play ranked because what are they shooting for but 
uh, I remember Mena RD tweeting like, "I will play ranked because there's a legend ranked," and so that that matters, right? Because the more legitimate people are, that are playing ranked and taking it seriously, the more legitimate the mode itself becomes. You can, it's more reliable for good practice. So that's a very good thing. Um, and so we'll, I'm sure we'll see some very very funny posts about it uh, as time goes on. <laughs> okay. Last thing on the docket, Undernight in birth two. Uh, I don't remember if we knew about this beforehand this is actually this is the first time i'm hearing about this um but they're doing an open beta test and it's soon it's in a few weeks uh and so this game comes out uh this game comes out early next year uh i believe it's the same exact weekend as tekken even uh and it has been it, it looks great like from what i've seen <clears throat> i'm personally going to be jumping into the undernight scene and into the into the game with this this installment uh and so i'm definitely really anxious to give it a try uh but unfortunately you know they're doing the right thing the, the right thing by making it playstation only it's like listen bro i don't own a console i'm a pc only player it really sucks that we never we, we don't we don't get betas that often because we see what happens whenever <laughs> with betas <laughs> betas happen on pc uh it just be like that you know, I've just accepted that uh, I'm in a very small percentage of people that kind of gets kind of gets fucked by this. But most people, uh, most people are not impacted by this. Like, I, I think I feel like most people in the fighting game community have both. Uh, they have PC and a console, so this doesn't really bother them that much. But it does feel kind of bad that, you know, I'll be on the sidelines watching. I'll definitely be watching footage because I like I said, I think. Uh, Undernight system mechanics and the game itself are like really fucking cool, uh, and I actually think it's my type of game. So I uh, might might see me compete in this game uh, if things go well. So yeah, that's it for this edition of Scoops. There's a lot of stuff going on, guys. The end of the year is approaching rapidly. A lot of companies are kind of like all over the place trying to get things together before the turn of the year, uh, and so you know we'll just keep, stay tuned for whatever news comes down the pipes. And until then. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next one.